Okay. Everyone in the common room was much too busy in letting off more holiday steam to observe what anyone else was, was up to. Ron, Harry, and Hermione sat apart from everyone else by a dark window that was gradually filling up with snow, and Harry read out, Dear Harry, Congratulations on getting past the horn tail. Whoever put your name in that goblet shouldn't be feeling too happy right now. I was going to suggest a conjunctivist curse, as a dragon's eyes are its weakest point. That's what Crumb... <laughs> Oops, that's what Crumb did, Hermione whispered. So I guess I should have said, that's what Crumb did. Hermione whispered, but your way was better. I'm impressed. Oh, for crying out loud. I'm totally... Re ah. And you'd think I know better because the, the letter is in italics. Okay. I was going to suggest a conjunctivist curse as a dragon's eyes are its weakest point. That's what Crumb did, Hermione whispered. But your way was better. I am impressed. Don't get complacent, though, Harry. You've only done one task. Whoever put your name in for the tournaments got plenty more opportunity if they're trying to hurt you. Keep your eyes open particularly when the person we discussed is around. And concentrate on keeping yourself out of trouble. Keep in touch. I still want to hear about anything unusual. Serious. He sounds exactly like Moody, said Harry quietly, tucking the letter away inside his robes. Constant vigilance. You'd think I'd walk around with my eyes shut, banging off the walls. But he's right, Harry, said Hermione. You have still got two tasks to do. You really ought to have a look at your egg, you know, and start working out what it means. Hermione, he's got ages, snapped Ron. Want a game of chess, Harry? Yeah, okay, said Harry. Then, spotting the look on Hermione's face, he said, Come on. How am I supposed to concentrate with all this noise going on? I won't even be able to hear the egg over this lot. Oh, I suppose not, she sighed, and she sat down to watch their chess match, which culminated in an exciting checkmate of Ron's involving a couple of recklessly brave pawns and a very violent bishop. All right, well, there's a nice break. I think we can go ahead and... <laughs> Just kidding. Harry awoke very suddenly on Christmas Day. Ooh, Christmas Day. Wondering what had caused his abrupt return to consciousness, he opened his eyes and saw something very large, round, green eyes. He... Wondering what had caused his abrupt return to consciousness, he opened his eyes and saw something with very large round green eyes staring back at him in the darkness. So close, they were almost nose to nose. Dobby! He yelled. scrambling away from the elf so fast he almost fell out of bed. Don't do that! Dobby is sorry, sir, squeaked Dobby, anxiously jumping backward with his long fingers over his mouth. Dobby is only wanting to wish Harry Potter Merry Christmas and bring him a present, sir. Harry Potter did say Dobby could come and see him sometimes, sir. It's okay said Harry, still breathing rather faster than usual while his heart rate returned to normal. Just, just, 
defraud me or something in the future, all right? Don't bend over me like that. Harry pulled back the curtains around his four-poster, took his glasses from his bedside table, and put them on. His yell had awoken Ron, Seamus, Dean, and Neville. All of them were peering through the gaps in their own hangings, heavy-eyed and tousle-haired. Someone attacking you, Harry? Seamus asked sleepily. No, it's just Dobby. Go back to sleep. Nah, presents, said Seamus, spotting the large pile at the foot of his bed. Ron, Dean, and Neville decided that they decided that now they were awake. Oh. Ron, Dean, and Neville decided that now they were awake, they might as well get down to some present opening, too. I think I would have written that differently. Had decided that now, now that they were awake... All right, either way, they were all getting up to open presents. Harry turned back to Dobby, who was now standing nervously next to Harry's bed, still looking worried that he was upset. There was a Christmas bobble tied to the loop on top of his tea cozy. Can Dobby give Harry Potter his present? He squeaked tentatively. Of course you can, said Harry. Er, I've got something for you, too. It was a lie. He hadn't bought anything for Dobby at all. But he quickly opened his trunk and pulled out a particularly knobby, rolled-up pair of socks. They were his oldest and foulest, mustard yellow, and had once belonged to Uncle Vernon. <laughs> the reason they were extra knobbly was that Harry had been using them to cushion his sneakoscope for over a year now. <laughs> he pulled out the sneakoscope and handed the socks to Dobby, saying, Sorry, I forgot to wrap them. But Dobby was utterly delighted. Socks are Dobby's favorite, favorite clothes, sir. He, uh, he... Oh, ripping off his old socks and pulling on Uncle Vernon's. I has seven now, sir, but sir... He said, his eyes widening, having pulled both socks up to their highest extent so that they reached to the bottom of his shorts... They has made a mistake in the shop, Harry Potter. They is giving you two the same. Uh, no. Harry, how come you didn't spot that? Said Ron, grinning over from his own bed, which was now strewn with wrapping paper. Tell you what, Dobby, here you go. Take these two, and you can mix them up properly. And here's your sweater. He threw Dobby a pair of violet socks, he had just unwrapped, and the hand-knitted sweater Mrs. Weasley had sent. Dobby looked quite overwhelmed. Sir, is very kind, he squeaked, his eyes brimming with tears again, bowing deeply to Ron. Dobby knew his sir must be a great wizard, for he is Harry Potter's greatest friend, but Dobby did not know that he was also as generous of spirit as noble, as selfless. They're only socks, said Ron, who had gone slightly pink around the ears, though he looked rather pleased all the same. Wow, Harry, he said. He had just opened Harry's present, a Chudley Cannon's hat. Whoa! He jammed it onto his head, where it clashed horribly with his hair. Dobby now handed Harry a small package, which turned out to be... Socks. Dobby is making them himself, sir. He is buying the wool out of his wages, sir. He left the, <laughs> the left sock was bright red and had a pattern of broomsticks upon it. The right sock was green with a pattern of snitches. They're, they're really, well, thanks, Dobby. 
and he pulled them on, causing Dobby's eyes to leak with happiness. Oh, goodness, that's ten minutes already. Dobby must now go, sir. He is already making Christmas dinner in the kitchens, said Dobby. And he hurried out of the dormitory, waving goodbye to Ron and the others as he passed. Okay. Christmas time at Hogwarts, it appears. <laughs>